It is curious that one of those ideas that Senator Winder mentioned that we kind of talked about there, making companies that mandate vaccines liable for any illness that could come from it. Yet one of the bills passed during last summer's special pandemic session and then was extended this session to next summer was that one that would protect Idaho businesses from being liable if anyone got COVID while on the job. But now they might consider holding a business responsible for a rare illness from the vaccine. And another interesting part of our conversation with Senator Winder, you kind of heard that back and forth there, was what he said about the vaccine, calling it experimental instead of emergency use authorized by the FDA. He called it semantics, but is it? Because those two meanings are very far apart. Let's be clear, the COVID vaccine is not experimental, and here's why. They have all been put through the standard safety testing before they were made public. Some of those steps were just combined or done quicker than usual. It was called Operation Warp Speed for a reason. The Department of Defense, who's in charge of Operation Warp Speed, describes it like this. It will accelerate testing, supply, development, and distribution of safe and effective vaccines to counter COVID-19 by January 2021. Leveraging the best experts from the federal government and private industry without compromising safety, they said. So here's how that whole process works. Typically, the first eight months of a vaccine development is just that, developing viable vaccine candidates based on the biology of the virus and other vaccines, the research and development phase, and the phase one clinical trials. They did those things, but they were condensed to five months instead of the usual eight months. Then the phase two and phase three clinical trials were where animal testing and tens of thousands of volunteers were used to collect data. That whole process is usually the longest step and typically takes about 44 months, which is nearly four years. They did it in about six months with Operation Warp, Warp Speed so that by July of 2020, they had two promising vaccine candidates. At the same time that was happening, you can see the colors here. The same time that was happening, the federal government began funding large scale manufacturing of those promising candidates, meaning they were manufacturing the vaccines as they were still testing. And usually that manufacturing would wait until after phase two and the phase three trials, and that would take an additional 15 months to complete. But those three things were combined again because of Operation Warp Speed in just six months. That's usually when the FDA review process begins, which would take another 12 months. But that was sped up by the continuous data that was collected in those phase three trials, which we are still in technically, by the way, and which is how we keep getting these approvals to lower the eligibility age. Then there's the distribution, which took a tiered approach, you might remember, starting with the elderly, healthcare workers, on its way down, and which has worked its way down, I should say. It usually happens over a six month period. We did it in three months. So what would usually take a total of 73 months to complete, more than five years, took just 14 months because of Operation Warp Speed, or speed without skipping a step. So what phase are we in now? How close are we to this full FDA approval? Well, Pfizer submitted their application back in May, Moderna about a month later. So now we're in the regulatory review phase, which can take up to 60 days. But with these likely being granted priority reviews, which means full approval can happen by the beginning of next year, likely. And that process could also be sped up even further thanks to all the data and the success of the emergency use authorization. So no, the COVID vaccines are not experimental and the EAU approval could actually mean they become fully approved a lot sooner than usual.